The focus seemed to swing back onto aged care uh, residences and, and uh, formal care settings and victimisation by paid carers when really it's going to be someone's son, daughter or grandson. Are there particular vulnerabilities for the LGBTQI community? Yes, uh, the particular vulnerability is the deal. The deal that was made during their growing up uh, between society and them. You keep quiet about your sexual orientation. You keep it strictly to yourself. Do not confront us with the awful reality of your difference and we'll leave you alone. I am looking at 48-year-old women that are grandmothers thinking they can go back to work and now they're custodial grandmothers. So and suddenly that they're, they're not looking after the kids, they're bringing up the kids. Yes, absolutely. And you get a lot of government workers who just assume, they assume the, the grandmother will take the children if there's a problem in the family. Someone can't just walk in and pretend to represent you yeah. uh, as a customer and, t and make transactions on your account. They have to have some form of documentation. But staff often see this unfolding in the branch. You know, they see an elderly person, uh, you know, maybe um, being spoken to in a way by somebody that would indicate that perhaps this is not an entirely healthy or consensual um, set of financial arrangements. I, th I think it's actually a little bit of both. There are older women who've been enduring sexual abuse all their lives. There are some older women who remarry uh, and find themselves in a relationship where the partner's abusive. Uh, and that's really that intimate partner abuse. Um, but we know as well too from the research that sexual abuse happens in the context of uh, institutions. Mm -hmm.